anyway, gusto ko lang sabihin na ano na in all of these things yung may dinadaanan natin, I would like to encourage each and every, pwede na Ella, I would, sa mga lahat ng dinadaanan natin, I would like to encourage you and yan na I, I looked again at Genesis 17, sabi nga nun in the NKJV, sabi niya, uh, I am Almighty God. Sabi niya kay Abraham, di ba? I am Almighty God. Walk before me. Before me. Before me. Sabi niya ganyan. Tapos yung international standard version, di ba? It's, ano, it's um, um, live in constant awareness that I am with you. Pero nung kanina iniisip ko, bakit kaya walk before me? Kasi di ba, ibig sabihin, nasa harap ka, di ba? So in essence, so the Lord is saying, live from the finished work. Live from God. Hindi live for God. Live from God. The, the fact that, eh, okay, whatever it is, right? He's at your rear guard. He is your rear guard, actually. Kung maga, ano kanya, sasaluhin kanya. Whatever it is, ganyan. Ang ganda, no? Ano, it really warmed my heart kanina na I realized, say ko, Lord, talagang ano, talagang, um, ito yung, ano, yung, the Lord wants us to be, to be at that state of innocence where in it's like when your child cries at the middle in the middle of the night you are there comforting the child how much more our heavenly father that in all of these things he is with you even though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death just like in kwento ni Kuya Noel kanina with with Arlene i am with you I am with you. I am with you. Ang ganda, no? Ang ganda. Hallelujah. So let's start with uh, the Sermon 12, Part 2. I think we're going to tackle three questions tonight. Let's begin with, okay, let's just be reminded. So Christ the Healer, Pastor F.F. Bosworth, Why Some Fail to Receive Healing from Christ, Part 2. So, why some, ito lang ha, pwede, pwede natin i-paraphrase. I Why some are not awakened to the truth that they are already healed? In other words, because the scripture says, God said in Isaiah 53, by his stripes you are healed. So, ang, ang ano nun, ang, ang, ang in essence, what the scripture is telling us, it's that we need to be awakened to the truth or we need to know the truth kung hindi pa natin alam. But we need to also progress. Di ba narinig natin? Ah, meron akong deeper understanding ngayon. And that's why um, the Lord is, um, I think, honored for us to honor every time we meet together. Kasi it's yung from last week, ba? it's community belief. Now we are encouraging one, uh, uh, one another. We are throwing the bouquet. And yan, to one another every Saturday. And also, I would just like to remind everybody, di ba, we tackled yung joy. Because the joy of the Lord is your strength. The joy of the Lord is your strength. And joy is just like a jam. The more you spread it, the more you end up covered in it. In James 1, 2, it says, temptations and contradictions Contradictions, uh, uh, experience of sickness, etc., including come in different shapes, sizes, and intervals. Their intention is to always is always to suck you into their energy field. So the mirror mirror Bible translation. Tone. However, your joy in who you know you are leads you out triumphantly every time. Again. However, your joy in who you know you are leads you out triumphantly every time. Ano yung leads? The word leads in Greek is hegiomai. Hegiomai comes from a strength from a strengthened form of agoo. Yan, agoo la union. Which means to lead, to officially appoint in a position of authority. To lead with distinguished authority. So joy is the official voice of faith. It is the manifestation of faith. Count it all joy. Make a calculation to which joy can be the only logical 
conclusion. So so now you can afford to be, sabi nga ni Paul, no, he, he repeated it four times, rejoice in the Lord. And again, I say rejoice even in the midst of contradiction. Because how? Because however your joy in who you know you are will lead you out triumphantly every time. And who, who are you? You are, a, you are a son. You are a daughter of the Most High God. Live in constant awareness that He is with you. Hallelujah. So, um, uh, more pa. Here's the secret. Joy is not something you have to fake. It is the fruit of what your faith knows to be true about you. You know that the proof of faith results in a persuasion that remains constant in contradiction. So um, another word for faith is persuasion. So when we hear and hear about the word of Christ, we are persuaded more and more. Because faith is not something that is like, oh, you really have to believe. No, faith is a journey. Faith is lekleka. So your faith from yesterday, as you hear the word of Christ today, it's actually it actually increased, right? So faith is a discovery. Lord, let me discover more. Like, um, sabi ko kanina dun sa life group, my my prayer is to really discover who you are to me, Lord, my Abba Daddy God, that I am your son. So this year I want to experience that. Yun yun. So, um, James one four, just like a mother hen patiently broods over her eggs steadfastness provides you with a consistent environment and so patience prevails and proves your perfection how entirely whole you are and without any shortfall sis fransa that's why i said glad tidings what, what is glad tidings the gospel the gospel ignite great joy if anyone was lost in adam the same everyone was found in christ the good news is not about telling people how lost they are. Let's tell everyone, let's tell each other how valued, how loved, and found they are. And you know that the Lord meets us at the point of our needs, at the point of where we are. Even our, even our friends from the other side, even from uh, 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 our Friends who are in the Catholic Church, Protestant Church, yung mga hindi pa nag-grace. You know, uh, I had this metanoia na, Lord, you meet, you meet all of us where we are because you are very, very good. It is, it, is, uh, it is the goodness of your heart that somewhere the gospel is going to be preached to that person. Just like our experience, right? Because he is a good father. Hallelujah. So, number four. Um, reasons why we are not awakened to the truth that we are already healed. Tradition of men. One tradition is that God is the author of disease. That you have to suffer, that he wills the sickness of some of his worshippers. It is a consistent uh, uh, rhetoric, right, from uh, when we were... Uh, when we were still, ako, I, as far as I can remember when I was young, na, oh, and even when I came to know the Lord, ano na, nasa, ano na ako, born again church, ito pa rin yung paniniwala, which is simply not true. In 2 Timothy 1.9, it says, Who hath saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according, not according to our goody-goody, to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace his own purpose and grace which was given us in christ jesus before the world began so even before the world began god was already thinking about you and i so yung saved no has saved us saved us saved past tense healed delivered Save, which is sozo in greek so the greek word save is sozo and it means to live save to live save to live protected, to live in divine health, to do well, and to be whole. And this child of God is yours and it's mine because of the finished work of Jesus Christ. It's not something we have to beg for. Save is who you are. Save is who I am. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we are to live saved. We are to live whole, to live life from our divinity. In verse 10, it says, but is now made manifest by the appearing of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who has abolished death and has brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. 
in the mere Bible translation of this verse, he rescued the integrity of our original design and revealed that we have always been his own from the beginning, even before that even before time was. This has nothing to do with anything we did to qualify or disqualify ourselves. We are not talking about religious good works or karma. Jesus unveils grace to be the eternal intent of God. Grace celebrates our pre-creation innocence and now declares our redeemed union with God in Christ Jesus. The word innocence, I just like to explain it, no? It's the relationship of, of, of uh, a father or a mother to, the, to their children, right? The children don't care about Meralco, don't care about my Nilad payments, don't care about the rental. They know, they're so innocent, they know that their parents are going to provide for them. When they are sick, they're going to be comforted. When they're sick, they're going to be healed, right? They're going to be fed. Hallelujah. So yun yung, the Lord wants us to go back to that, to that um, awakening. Go back to that thinking. Hallelujah. So the mere Bible notes for this verse, before time was, before time was, it means pro, chronos, ayonos. Yung chronos, di ba? Uh, yung chronos, yung relo. Yung uh, uh, sequential. Ionos is eternal. So pro before chronos means a measured duration or length of time. Ionos means ages. It speaks eternal, eternal life. And we know what's the meaning of eternal life, right? Eternal life is knowing God the Father and Jesus Christ in John 17.3. And kairos, kairos is the cross, Right? It's a Jew or specific moment of time, which is outside time. And you are in it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Paul speaks of God's mind made up about us before the ages. So kanina sabi ko, I was uh, encouraging my life group. You know, you don't need to impress God. You don't need to impress God with whatever. You, we need to be impressed by Him. It's the other way around which is a concept in which eternity is divided up into various periods, the shorter of which are comprehended in the longer. This was before calendar time existed, before the creation of the galaxies and constellations. So si Francois Dutrois, he's saying, he's just saying, it's so simple. Agree with God about you. Be impressed by Him. Here's what fires up faith and fellowship. Simply acknowledge and appreciate that every divine attribute on display in Jesus Christ during Kairos at the cross is equally present in another in Philemon 1.6. How do you know for certain that it is in you? In 1 John 2, 7 to 8, everything that is true of him is equally true of you. Everything that is true of him is equally true of you. Jesus is not an example for you but of you. The alternative is this. Here's, that, uh, here's what neutralizes faith and kills fellowship. Communicate all the lack and the wrongs in you and others. James, the brother of Jesus, says that when we go back to the old way of seeing ourselves, we immediately forget what manner of person we are. What manner of person are you? You are healed. You are whole. Well, if we can immediately forget, we might as well stop wasting time and immediately remember and joy and indescribable adventure awaits you. Hallelujah. That's why I so love Francois de Trois. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, tignan natin yung 2 Timothy 1.9 in the interlinear. So it says in the Greek, The one having saved us and having called us with holy calling, not according to the works of us, but according to his own purpose. Yung purpose dyan, I think naaral natin to from before, but um, the Lord wants us to remember. Purpose. Ano yung purpose? Protesin. Prothesis, yung root word. It means a setting forth, a proposal, specifically showbread. Huh? Showbread, the sacred bread, the bread, the body of Jesus Christ. So in, in, in the Old Testament, the equivalent actually is uh, uh, it's the bread of presence or showbread, prothesis, redesign. So our purpose in life is to be one with Jesus. In the Hebrew tradition, the showbread pointed to the true bread from heaven, the authentic word that proceeded from the mouth of God. Jesus, the incarnate word, sustaining the life of our design. So ito yan, okay. The, uh, the, 
in the in the tented aside from the so it says it, it says yung prothesis no it's the bread no but i would just like to um discuss also yung lampstand okay the first tented area was called the holy place the only light here came from the lampstand illuminating the table upon which the showbread prothesis was presented so it's illuminating the showbread and we know we know also that the lampstand is a picture of our lord jesus christ the hebrew word lahem panim it means you show brother it's so precious and it's it should bless you as it blessed me when i read this the showbread it means face to face it's the bread of presence so every time we have communion right it is the bread of his presence hallelujah the lampstand was a beautifully crafted golden chandelier portraying budding and blossoming almond branches it is a picture of resurrection hallelujah so what the lord wants to illuminate is the fact that you died and your life is hidden with christ in god the same jesus who the same spirit who raised jesus from the dead lives in you the almond branches are the are a picture of resurrection because it's the first three to awake from winter. In Jeremiah 1.12, when God said, I'm awake over my word to perform it, the same word, the same Hebrew word is used here, shakad. The almond was called the awake tree because it is it blossomed first while the other trees were still in their winter sleep. Ha, hallelujah. And you you were resurrected together with Christ. Hallelujah. So um, from another angle, I know. So you shall also make a lampstand of pure gold. The lampstand shall be of hammered work, its shaft and its branches, its bow, its bowls, its ornamental knobs and flowers shall be one of one of one piece. And the six branches shall, shall come out of its sides, three branches from the lampstand out of the one side, and three branches from the lampstand out of the other side. Three bowls shall be made like Almond. So ito yung bowls, no? Ito yung bowls. One on one branch with an on, ornamental knob and a flower and three bowls made like almond blossoms on the other branch with an ornamental knob and a flower. And so for the six branches that comes out of the lampstand, hammered piece of pure gold. Gold speaks of righteousness. You are the righteousness of God in Christ. And therefore, you have no association with any sickness. These branches are formed out of the central branch. The central branch represents the Lord Jesus Christ. It had the appearance of an almond tree, which speaks of resurrection. This is the revelation of the Spirit and the Word. We begin to see things differently through the oil of His Spirit. We see things differently through the oil of His Spirit. Even we see things differently, even in the midst of contradiction. The tree reminds me of John 15 and the vine and the branches. The stand in the middle is symbolic of Christ. The six branches, the, the number of man who is incomplete, we are incomplete unless in union with Christ, making them seven. Hallelujah. Ang ganda, no? Hallelujah. So, in Psalms 119.105, Your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. The entrance of your word gives light. So when there is darkness, seemingly darkness, that is hovering around you, the entrance of his word gives light. In Revelations 1.12, Then I turned to see the voice that spoke with me, and having turned, I saw seven golden lampstands, and in the midst of the seven golden, seven lampstands, one like the Son of Man. In the book of Revelation, we see Jesus in the midst of the lampstand. It is interesting that when Jesus was positioned, he heard a voice behind him. Behind him. Remember, God Almighty, Daddy God said to Abraham, walk before me. Hallelujah. John was in the spirit on the Lord's day. This speaks of the finished work, the most holy place. But Jesus was behind him. Because Jesus is wherever we are, wherever we are, Helping us to move forward and discover all there is in Him. Hallelujah. 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 So, which brings me to this song. Um, uh, this is the song from Hillsong. Um, and, uh, uh, 
I'm lost without you. Pakinggan nyo, ang ganda. Your holy presence living in me. It speaks of the showbread. Pointing towards the daily sustenance of life in the flesh. As the ultimate tabernacle of God, you are the tabernacle of God. Realize in the account of Jesus with the two during the road trip to Emmaus, their hearts were burning with resonance and faith while he opened the scriptures to them. Then around the table, their eyes were open to recognize, awaken, awaken to the truth, right? Of the fulfillment, fulfillment of the scripture, their true meal, their prothesis, their purpose. What is your purpose? Your purpose is Jesus to know him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And out of the overflow, out of the overflow, you can throw the bouquet. But your purpose is to know him. Hallelujah. And Luke 24, 27 to 31. Mankind shall not live by bread alone, but by the authentic thought of God, the word proceeding from his mouth, the original intent, his image and likeness incarnated, revealed, and redeemed in human life. Hallelujah, hallelujah. So, another uh, an another uh, 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 thought that uh, Pastor Bos Bosworth said, the, tr the tradition that says that we can glorify God more by remaining sick and exhibiting patience that we can by being divinely, than we, than we can versus being divinely healed. This is a lie from the pit of hell. Yeah? In the account, in John 5, 6, our Lord Jesus asked the paralyzed man at the pool of Bethesda, do you want to be made whole? Remember in Psalms 23, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I shall not want. Do you want to be made whole? So, tingnan natin interlinear, no? The interlinear there that I want, the, the, the words that I want to focus on is yung, um, yung, do you want to be made whole? Is Do you desire do you to to become to become uh, do you desire to become well do you desire to become well do you want to be made whole you know yung to become jan it's ginomai ginomai in greek to come into being to come into being to happen to become you know there's another verse in romans 7 4 it says that we are married to another to him who was raised from the dead you know the the word married it's ginomai it's ginomai. The word married, it's ginomai. It means to become, cause to be, to emerge. It signifies a change of condition, a state of being placed. So do you want, right? Do you want? Do you desire? Do you want to be, do you want to ginomai? We are married to another. We become, we became or emerge as another. And who is another? Him who was raised from the dead. We emerge or become him, we became him who was raised from the dead. Our identity is the new man in Christ, one flesh with him. Married, you are married to Christ, married to the one who is whole, to becoming and to becoming one. So I'd just like to uh, um, um, go back again to the discussion we had in uh, one of the episodes, I think chapter 3, in um, eat, your, eat Your Way to Life and Health. So in the times of Yeshua, a young man would choose a young woman that he wanted to marry. He and his father would go to the, the, the house of the young woman and meet with her and, the father, and, and her father. The men would discuss the bride's price. The bride's price was an amount of money or goods exchanged between the groom and the bride's father. It was a dowry. When they arrived, the price that was to uh, when they arrived at the price that was to be paid for his for the dowry for the young girl, which which is around uh, 14, 15, 16 years of age, the young man would then ask to marry him, but he did it in a very Jewish way. The young man would take a flask of wine, he would pour a cup of wine and hand it to the son, to his son. The son would then turn to the young woman with all the solemnity of 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 an oath before the almighty god himself that young man would take that cup of wine and say to that young woman this cup is the new covenant in my blood which i offer to you in other words he's saying the the young man was saying to the young woman i love you i'll be your faithful husband will you be my bride hallelujah so 
In the Jewish tradition, entering into covenant is called the betrothal contract. At this point, the young woman could say no and refuse the cup, or she could say yes and take the cup and cup and take a drink. Then she in turn would take the cup and hold it out to her groom and would say, all that I have and all that I am, I give to you. I will be your bride. I will marry you. And this formality was the practice instituting the engagement. So in, in, in John, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and Matthew, several times the Lord Jesus referred to us as, as his bride and him as the bridegroom. So let's look at the Passover dinner, our Lord Jesus Christ, uh, that he had in the upper room, remember, in the upper room with his disciples. And so this is actually the upper room experience. So unleavened bread is stripped, striped, pierced, and served at every seder. Yung seder meal is the Passover. When he took the bread, he blessed and broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Then there are four cups usually poured and celebrated in the traditional seder. Four cups. The third cup, which is this one, is the cup of redemption. When Yeshua came to the third cup, instead of, he didn't say the usual prayer. Instead of saying, so this is the usual prayer. Instead of saying, blessed art thou, O Lord our God, King of the universe, creator of the fruit of the vine, he said this. Instead, he said this. Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many, for the remissions, for the forgiveness of sins. The disciples were shocked. Yeshua, in essence, was saying, all that I am and all that I have, I give to you because I love you. Will you marry me? Will you be my bride? He was proposing a marriage to them. The words usually associated with the marriage proposal were inserted into the upper room Passover, when they celebrate uh, in the upper Passover, it was inserted into this feast they had celebrated all their lives. Hallelujah. Yeshua, our Lord Jesus Christ, was renewing the covenant with them. It marked a reconciliation with Israel and redemption for all mankind. It was a recovenanting of the marriage. So the Lord is reminding us tonight behold, the days are coming, and it has come actually. When I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel, with the house of Judah, it has come because of the cross. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to lead them out of Egypt. My covenant which they broke, though I was a husband to them, says the Lord. In Isaiah 54, 5, it says, For your husband is your maker, whose name is the Lord of hosts, and your Redeemer is the Holy One of Israel who is called the God of the earth. Colossians 2, 9 to 10. For in Christ, there is all of God in a human body. So you have everything when you have Christ. You have everything when you have Christ and you are filled with God through your union with Christ. He is the highest ruler with authority over every other power, over every other name that there is, including cancer. Hallelujah. And the word ginomai, it also means to be born. Peter said we were born again in the resurrection. We are the embodiment of the fullness of God. To see us is to see God. And with that, and with that is the beautiful understanding that we are not God, huh? but rather his empowering presence is in us. The presence of the Father, the Son, and the Holy, and the Holy Spirit completely inhabits us. And John said it like this, as he is so are we in this world. Our identity is with him, our identity with him, as him is co-identity, a single shared identity. Hallelujah. So good, no? So, yung another question, another factor, lukewarmness of the church, which was, um, uh, uh, simply put, you're mixing the old covenant and the new covenant. You're mixing works with grace. Inyon. So, um in uh in i think this is second timothy hang on eh. it's it's second timothy 2 suffering do not distract us neither do they contradict our joint possession with him in the throne room 
the Christ life rules. If we contradict ourselves, behave like ourselves, he will contradict us and prove us wrong. The word aniomai means to contradict. Our unbelief, ito, this is most precious, our, un, our unbelief does not change what God believes. He cannot contradict himself. What we believe about God does not define him. God's faith defines us. God cannot be untrue to himself. So, gently remind yourself, your audience, always of these things, which focus on the fact that the life of your design is redeemed in Christ Jesus. So, do not be lukewarm. This is what it's saying. Gently remind yourself of the new covenant. Because we were included in his death and are therefore equally included in his resurrection. This, the fountain of our faith, cannot be contradicted by any persecution, by any contradiction, because God cannot be untrue to himself. Let your testimony in your face-to-face -face encounter with the Lord speak for itself. You don't need to engage in a war of words, desperately, desperately try and defend, and defend doctrines and perception. Instead of proving profitable, these debates are catastrophic to the faith of your students. To mix two systems will certainly confuse your audience, will certainly confuse you. So, without any delay, live your life from a place where you are familiar with the complete approval of God. You do not need to apologize for the fact that your experience might be in contradiction to your faith. What God believes about you needs no defense. There is such an immediate authority in clarity. Truth triumphs over every contradiction. It makes a clear-cut division between light and darkness. The word of truth shows distinctly that the duty-driven law of works and annoyances and the love-driven law of perfect liberty have nothing in common. Yung spudaso, yung without any delay, no? Number one, dito, uh, without any delay, means to be, to, uh, means to use speed, to be prompt, pivot, ibig sabihin nun, the word paristemi, to live your life, a proper preposition indicating close proximity, a thing proceeding from a sphere of influence with, just, with a suggestion of union of place, of residence to have sprung from its author and giver, originating from, denoting the point from which an action originates, intimate connection, stemmy to possession. And the word alatheia, which is number three, means to not, uh, not concealed, but it's truth and clarity. Hallelujah, ayan, clarity. It means, actually, clarity also means truth. Yung alatheia kasi, it's the Greek word for truth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, Paul said, it's no longer I who lives, but Christ. And he said, for me to live is Christ. In other words, he said, my life is Christ. His identity was Christ. Was Paul exalting himself above Christ? Was he denying the supremacy of Jesus Christ? No, absolutely not. Paul simply understood that he was baptized in Christ. He was immersed in Christ. The word baptized is baptizo, meaning to immerse but it also meant more than simply dunking an object in water or liquid. In the clothing industry, in, it meant to immerse cloth in a vat of dye, and the cloth took on the characteristics of the dye liquid. In other words, the cloth absorbed the colored dye, and it so became the same color. So, when used in the religious realm, when the Jews, were, uh, Jews walked into the mikveh, the ritual of cleansing bath, cleansing bath, the understanding was that they took on the qualities of the living water they were immersed in, becoming pure and clean. That's single identity. That's understanding we are as Him. We are baptized into Him, immersed in Him, taking on the qualities of the living God because it is finished. So, when we celebrate communion, we too are renewing our covenant with Him. He's offering Himself again to us and asking for our response. In taking his cup, we are again saying, Lord, I receive your gift again today. And I give you all that I am and all that I have. I am your bride. When we say, I receive your gift, we are saying, Lord, I receive your righteousness, your healing, your deliverance. I receive my identity with you as holy, accepted, and loved. I receive your life within me that empowers me to represent you in our world by the power of the Holy Spirit. 
my life is yours, Lord. Be it unto me according to your word. So, again, again, Jesus asked the, par uh, paralyt uh, the paralyzed man, and he's actually asking you and I, do you want to be made whole? Do you want to be made whole? Ginomai. Ginomai. Jesus was asking the man if he was ready to abandon how he had been seeing himself and simply be who he truly was, whole and healthy. Then he told him, rise, take up your bed and walk. In other words, rise up and live the life I created you to live. Enjoy the abundant life. In Isaiah 60 verse, 20, uh, 60 verse 1, it says, Arise from the depression and prostration in which circumstances have kept you. Rise to a new life. Shine. Be radiant with the glory of the Lord, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. So the word rise means to awaken from sleep or death. The man had been afflicted for 38, 38 years, so I picked this picture. It's such a precious picture. Look into the eyes of the master of wholeness as he saw his own reflection. So when we hear and hear the word of Christ, we see our own reflection in him. He saw himself whole and he immediately awakened from out of his infirmity. He immediately awakened from out of his distorted sense of identity and he picked up his bed and enjoyed his abundant life. So we read really these healing accounts in the gospel and we think Jesus is asking us today, do you want to be made whole? We read into Jesus' words that he is asking if you have enough faith to be healed or if you desire enough or for the right reason. He's not asking us that. He's declaring to us, just like the man in John 5, are you convinced that you are already made whole? He's telling us to awaken and see ourselves as we truly are. Whole, complete, fully healed. Jesus has spoken to this man boldly. He didn't see him paralyzed. He saw him whole and healthy. He spoke the language of I am to him. He spoke resurrection language and the result was immediate. The man began to walk. All infirmity, the inability to produce results was gone. He now he was now seeing himself as he truly was, whole and healthy. In verse 14 and 5, 14 of chapter 5, Jesus sees the same man in the temple and says to him, See, you have become whole. Do not continue in your old distorted mindset, sin. Then nothing worse can happen to you. Jesus is not telling him that if he sins or continues in wrong behavior, he will be punished or become sick. No, that was old covenant thinking. He's telling him that sickness is not biological in origin. It has its beginning in the realm of your soul. Its origin is in our false, distorted identity, not seeing ourselves as beloved sons made in the image and likeness of Abba. That's why learning formulas or keys to getting healed won't help you. Healing is an identity issue. You don't need to get healed. We simply need to rise up in the revelation that we were healed 2,000 years ago. It is finished. So, number eight, the sixth person sin. Some fail to receive healing because they regard iniquity in their hearts. So, that na, na cover natin from last week, no? but I want to present another angle. Ito yung from last week. Forgiven. For unto us a child is bo born. Unto us a son is given. So really, the entire purpose of Jesus coming is for us to be forgiven. To be made the righteousness of God in Christ. So we are not sick. And no resident of Zion in Isaiah 33, 24 will say, I am sick. The people who dwell there will be forgiven their iniquity. This is talking about restore Jerusalem, your, the tabernacle of God. Why are we not to say we're sick? Because iniquity is forgiven. The word iniquity in Hebrew is abon, meaning iniquity, guilt, or sin. And Isaiah tells us in chapter 55 that, that Jesus was crushed for iniquity and by his stripes we are healed. And sin is hamartia in Greek. It means without form. Thayer's Greek lexicon defines it as a failure to hit the mark. He goes on to say that in Greek writings, it was used primarily to describe an error of understanding. An error of understanding. In Hebrew, sin is kata and means to lose oneself, to wander from the way. So sin is not about the things you do or don't do. It's about losing your way 
and missing out on sonship. And according to FDT, sin is to think less of you than what God thinks of you. What God thinks of you, you are whole. You are healed. Hallelujah. We are whole. In Romans 5 verse 1, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God. We are in union with Him through our Lord Jesus Christ. The mere Bible says it this way, the conclusion, exclamation point, not a question mark. Our blameless innocence has absolutely nothing to do with something we did to qualify ourselves. It is what happened to us solely because of our Lord Jesus Christ's doing. Faith and not reward is the only valid basis for righteousness. So let us now fully engage this seamless union in our face-to-face -face friendship with God. And in, and in that day, in John 14, 20, you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. The Father says to you and I, you are whole now. And my heart, without fully understanding what it means or looks like, responds, yes. He says, you are fully redeemed now, spirit, soul, and body, fully healed now. And again, my heart respond, respond yes, yes, whole complete finished and that my dear sisters and brother is chapter 13 part 2 praise the lord hallelujah yeah. wow <laughs> amen yeah. you know you know you breaking of the bread ah uh, yes it's a payan yeah you breaking of the bread kasi it's literally, come to think of it, no, no, it, 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 kasi when you eat something, it becomes a part of you. Diba? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when you eat and when you drink, it becomes a part of you. So when we partake of the bread, diba? it's literally him, yun yung, yun yung, yun is union eh, diba? Kasi it's becoming, a, he's becoming a part of you. So yun yun, you're eating his health, you are, uh, partaking of his divine righteousness, ganyan. So yun yun yung essence nun. That's why that, that's why it, it's another and an, parang another parang deeper um, understanding na hindi hindi ka, hindi mo lang siya ginagawa mm -hmm. for you to be healed. But no, it's more than that, right? It, it's much more than that. It it's the result is for sure wholeness. Yes. Because the fact that you are one with mm -hmm. the whole. The master of wholeness, di ba? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, talagang ano, talagang, mm -hmm. oh Lord, ano, uh, palagi kong, palagi kong nare-remind sa sarili ko na, Lord, I am forgiven, and therefore, I am not sick. I yes. am whole. Yes. Amen. 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 You just have to, ano, just have to remind each other, remind yourself na, na Lord, ito yung ano eh, this is my purpose. The bread of your presence, diba? 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 <laughs> Live in constant awareness as I am with you. And one way to one way to be aware, so aware of that, is when we partake of the communion. Yes. To declare his words over you. To declare Amen. wholeness over you. Yun, yun, yun. Like, mm. How precious, diba? Na, Lord, Ano ko talaga gusto mong ipaitin dito sa amin kasi ay ayo mo talagang ma-experience namin itong ano itong mga ito kasi you want us and i remember yung story nung ano nung um hindi ko na lang inintro dito but uh, just like to share it quickly before we partake of the bread remember when the lord jesus washed their feet it's not a simple you know uh but it's primarily to relieve them of their discomfort Kasi ang di ba noon naman eh ang mga shoes nila eh yung ano Open. pa our tribe di ba? Uh. <laughs> di ba? So tapos sa alikabok pa noon wala pa mga semento. So when when talagang very thick of ano yan eh mud and alikabok. Yes. Yeah. So it's very uncomfortable to 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 dine di ba? To have dinner with with you na ang dumidumi ng paamo. So it's it's really for the Lord. The Lord really cares for our comfort. So He doesn't want us to experience all of these things. And He Himself actually washed us, washed washed the disciples' feet, diba? 
Mm-hmm. Ang galing no, di ba? Ang galing. Ah, Tapos ang ending eh, ano? Ang ending eh, literally, he's saying, will you be one with me? Kasi he's asking them to get married with him eh. During the betrothal ceremony eh. Di ba? Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Um, let's lift the bread. Um, Father, Father, we thank you for this blessed night. Um, even though we are not complete, we felt your presence. And thank you for expounding the word to us for tonight. Um, the feeling is ours. It is Amen, Amen, Amen. Father, that it is your heart to see us well in all areas of our life, Amen. and Lord, that it is really it is born out of love. Our salvation, our healing, our provision is born out of your great love for us. You so loved us that you sent Jesus, your darling Son, to save us, to heal us, to provide for everything that we would ever need in this lifetime and it is also out of jesus great love for us that he obeyed to the father's will he knew that he will be born as a man and he will die to carry and bear all of our sicknesses and diseases we thank you lord that whatever you say will come to pass all of your promises always do and thus says the Lord, he himself took our infirmities and carried away our diseases. So tonight, Lord, we are our hearts are just overflowing with joy and gratefulness. Very grateful in receiving our gift, Amen. our portion of healing, our portion of deliverance, our portion of provision. Amen. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that we can um, be rest assured that as we go to sleep tonight, your hedge of protection is over our family. Amen. Uh, amen. 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 Thank you so much, Lord Jesus, for everything that you did and you continue to do in our lives. Thank amen. You, Lord Jesus. Thank you for everything. We are just. Amen. 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 Joy. joy of the Lord is truly our strength. And Lord, Lord, let us thank you for this kingdom, friends, that keep encouraging us. No matter what happens to us, they are always there to uplift us, to remind us, to remind us of the promises of Abba. Thank you. Let's pray. Amen. Amen. You raised up. Um, we thank you, Jesus, for the blood that you shed for us that wiped out our entire life sins. Thank you for Amen. Amen. new creation. We are very grateful for new beginnings, Lord. The, the old sick and the old sinful man is gone. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for making us the righteousness of God in Christ. And because we are righteous, we are destined to reign in this life. We thank you, Jesus, for always reminding us that we are richly blessed because whatever you have and whatever you have is also ours. So we receive it with grateful heart. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen.